Well, there's no question it makes sense. I mean, about 40% of Pinnacle is frozen. Any business of frozen food, like frozen food, that's got a strong number one in Nestle, more or less needs number two and three to get together. So it makes sense. It's just a question of the price paid and, and, and how much of it raises the stakes as far as generating synergies. And, and, and to that very point, though, what is your view of this price? Um, you know, relative to the market price, I think it's a pretty good execution for Conagra. Broadly speaking, they're buying a wonderful company in Pinnacle Foods. By that, I mean wonderfully run. A great, great management that's got low overheads and has you know, taken a lot of efficiencies out of everything. So, yeah, you know, I think in the big picture, the price is a little bit full, and that's why it uh, you know, raises the risk profile just a bit. Um, what were you going to say? I was going to... Uh, uh, no, I, I was, I was going to go to a larger, a, sort of a larger, larger question just about all of these sort of traditional old brands and, and, and long term in this new age of, I don't I hate to say new age, uh, but new age of new brands and direct to consumer and everything else that's happened, whether, whether these guys are going to be stuck in the past. Well, I look at it as a time of transition. All this change, you mentioned some of the digital trends going on, technology broadly has allowed retailers to get a lot smarter. And I think retailers are just learning faster than these big packaged food companies are. But I don't think it's a secular change, as in the, brand, the demand for these brands declines forever. I think it's a question of changing the assortment, you know, one-time adjustment. It's going to take some years to work out, but I think the best companies with the highest margins um, are, are, are going to wind up with a business that grows at something like GDP at some point in our future. Another, question, another way to ask Andrew's question is, does merging solve what ails these companies? I'm not sure it does, well, and based they, on what you just said, doesn't convince me. Uh, no, I, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't solve anything. It, 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 what it does is buy you time. It buys you time, and independently of what you... They can't control what's going on with technology, what's going on with retailers. All they can do is adjust. Taking out costs makes sense, getting synergies makes sense. All these things buy them time to make the right decisions, and you just have to trust the managements to make those right decisions. Jonathan, you said that uh, this will be a, a strong number two in frozen food brands. Uh, what is the overall prospect for frozen? I think it's a little bit counterintuitive uh, that it's not exactly uh, something in decline. Well, we like frozen food. It's actually been growing. And if you think about these meal kit businesses that, are, that have grown and attracted tons of investment and are growing double digit, um, frozen foods to me is the original meal kit. And it actually is one of the few center store food items that over skews to millennials, millennials rather. So it's got a bright future. It's got some pricing power. It's got a strong leader. So I actually like that category. Uh, and, and it's one of the reasons we recommend Conagra. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, I was going to go to Campbell's. What, 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 do you, what do you think should happen to Campbell's Soup? We, do, we detailed all of this. I mean, listen, I, I think it's easier. You know, I, I think they need to make some changes. I think you know, maybe changing, uh, thinking about you know, uh, strategic options is the right thing. For, I think their fresh business probably is, is, in, uh, is better off someplace else. And maybe uh, you know they, uh, the whole company, you know, perhaps could benefit from some outside thinking, particularly around costs and cost discipline. But does it make sense? I mean, the part part of the larger question, I think, is if you're a Kraft Heinz, for example, do you just let? Do you want to buy something like that, or let it just wither on the vine and buy it for next to nothing later? If you think that that's the direction this is all going. Look, if you compare it. One of the reasons you don't, these brands aren't really going to wither over the long run, in my view. This still has over 85% household penetration, believe it or not. And they still, with the share leverage they have, how much share they have relevant to number two, they're very, very important to retailers, particularly in season. So there's an, a latent pricing power that's there. Um, it's got to be matched with cost discipline. If you're going to take prices up, you're going to lose some volume. But it, th there's a lot of power in this brand, and, and, and it's far from done. I was surprised to hear you say that uh, frozen foods over index with millennials. Why is that? Why are they such big buyers when we think of them as being really obsessed with fresh and new and all that? Believe it or not, frozen is a very healthy technology. It, you know, it offers comparable benefits as far as ingredients to, to fresh. Um, a little bit more sodium because to get through that process. But there are ways of dealing with that too. You can get tasty food and it's convenient. What hasn't changed you know, over the past 20 years is consumers need for convenience. I think millennials want that as much as anybody and Frozen's one reasonably priced way for them to reach for that. I would look at all the growth factors for the meal kit business and say, you know, Frozen Foods is the original meal kit.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.